Welcome to Pocus Geek, I'm Jared Marks, and in this video we're going to be talking about urinary retention with severe hydronephrosis. Uh, this is uh, a case in which you'll have bilateral hydronephrosis due to urinary retention, and uh, these patients are clearly uncomfortable. They can have uh, renal failure secondary to this and should really be a diagnosis you want to make early and use your ultrasound. And, and many times in these, I'm going to start, I'm going to uh, deviate from my normal scanning protocol which includes evaluating the kidneys and I'm going to start with the bladder and if we put the probe on this patient oftentimes we can't see all the borders of the bladder because they have large volume retention and it's important that you know we're going to look at this and at least say yes let's at least get a fully in or let's relieve this pressure so in this case we can see the bladder is quite significantly big as we see indicated you know within this area and that you know that is um, quite a distended bladder in fact we can't even see a majority of the portion what's going to be up here and so we can look at our second view and we're gonna that was a long access view we can go to a short access view and again the bladder being this anechoic structure in the middle uh, that we'll be looking at and again quite large and and would be quite painful for your patient typically now this will typically happen in a male patient um, the most common cause is going to be a hypertrophied prostate. This can, however, happen in both sexes with a stricture within the urethra or uh, pelvic masses or other pelvic masses. Another consideration, which may be bladder atony. Um, you also have to consider some psychological causes that uh, at times may lead to uh, over distension of the bladder. And again, I like to diagnose these early because I can evaluate this area, let my nurse know um, that the patient needs a Foley catheter in, to alleviate this pressure when they can't pee, and then I can continue to evaluate the kidneys for further complications. Again, this represents real world uh, scanning. Not always are these gonna be textbook images, but it is enough to make the diagnosis, and I'm gonna go over those with you here. So in this case, um, what we're gonna see is that our kidney is right here um, with areas of hydronephrosis here, and we see that coming from the ureter in this area and then extending up into the renal pelvis, and this is getting into the calyces out in here, which at least gets us moderate, but we do see some areas of compression into the pyramids, which represents here, and, and different views that we obtain, and that indicates to us that this is severe hydronephrosis. So again, we have the kidney. This is, uh, again, the right kidney, but we see it here, and then we can see these areas of hydronephrosis within the renal pelvis, so by definition, severe is starting to have compression of the renal parenchyma, and that's what's occurring in, in this case. Now when we go to a short access view, we can see, again, here's our kidney, and we're gonna see the hydroureter coming from this area up into the kidney, into the renal pelvis, and again, extension over into the calyces, starting to put some compression onto the renal parenchyma. When we switch to the left, a uh, very difficult view in this patient. There can often be rib shadows as we see here, which extend down through here and block our view. And that can make it difficult to uh, scan, but we wanna do our due diligence and get around that as much as we can. We see the uh, kidney here and then in yellow, again, we see distension in hypochoic areas or anechoic areas. Um, and we move to the next view again we see all these areas of hydronephrosis and here it looks like that they're extended into the renal pelvis putting some um, areas on up into the calyces and this could be over distended pyramids that are you know due to the distension but also uh, more likely represents the hydronephrosis extending past the calyces and starting push to put pressure onto the renal parenchyma in a short access view, this gets even more difficult with those rib shadows in the way over again in this area. And what we can see here is our kidney is here. And then um, it's a little hard to tell exactly what's going on, but this is again hydronephrosis uh, coming from the ureter in this area up into the renal pelvis. And it looks like there's a septation, or if that's just the plane of cut, it's hard to say uh, based off this image. Once we have this diagnosis, so we have severe hydronephrosis with urinary retention, we can, uh, maybe we did this earlier, but we can try to estimate the volume. I've tried to look at this in the past and see like how accurate it is. It's not perfect, but it does tell you that um, there is some distension. 
the best quotes I've seen or um, justification say it's within about 25%. We'll see in this case that when we measure a length, um, as was done in this case by the white line, I would have probably measured it at the red line. We get a, a length of 13 centimeters. We can then in, then get a depth and a width, and we're getting that at 10.9 and 10.2. And then we can use uh, a calculation. Now, most machines will have this, a volume calculation, which you can do. Um, a common used equation, if you want to type it in or calculate it yourself, is um, using the length times width times height and times that was by 0 0.52. So in this case, we would get an estimated bladder volume of 751 mLs of, of fluid. Now keep in mind, anytime we have urinary retention, we also have to consider um, post-obstructive diuresis. So once we have relieved that pressure, they, the patients can then relieve the pressure on those, uh, those nephrons and as they do, then they become hyperactive and start to diurese. Keep in mind that a normal urine output is between 0 0.5 to 1 ml per kilogram per hour in adults. And you need to be cognizant that if they diurese, they will be putting out larger amounts of that. And I'm not gonna get into how to treat this or what to do at this time, um, but keep that in mind as, as a complication when you relieve urinary retention. I hope you found that video educational and helpful to you. Uh, if so, uh, please consider uh, checking out the rest of the channel and you know subscribing to the channel. Um, that is the purpose of this, is to help you use clinical ultrasound in your daily practice. If you have questions about this or other um, clinical ultrasound questions, you can reach out to me at pocusgeek at gmail.com. Have a great day.